Today, I'm brewing the Dragon's Breath beer. This is the next instalment in the D&D series of beers and ales that I'm brewing my own rendition of what I think they could be. Like I said, today, the Dragon's Breath beer. So what is the Dragon's Breath beer? It was considered a strong beer, exported from Sembia, with a strong, harsh flavour, best served with dark rye bread and strong cheeses. To me, a strong and harsh beer sounds mainly like an IPA, or more specifically, a double IPA. The harshness I'm going to assume comes from the high I IBUs and the strong flavour, well, from the high alcohol. So what is an IPA? I'm sure many people know the supposed myth that IPAs were just developed with a much higher alcohol percentage, much more hops, to be sent across to India. That's not completely true. In the early 18th century, pale ales were completely different to what we have now. They were very lightly hopped and very pale in colour. By the mid-18th century, coke-fired malt became much more popular, and this produced less smoking and roasting of the barley, produced a much paler beer in comparison. One such beer that was quite popular with the gentry was the October beer, a very pale but well-hopped beer. Once it was brewed, it was supposed to be cellared for two years before drinking. Now, one of the first breweries to export beers to India was the Bao Brewery. Popularity with being shipped to India was because it was only two miles downstream from the East India Company, so it's quite easy for them to ship their beer down. Amongst the beers that were initially shipped was actually this October beer, and that's because it benefited massively from the long, long voyage all the way to India, and it was supposed to be cellared for two months anyway. Now, after the owner of Bao Brewery, Hodgson, died, it passed to his son, as was tradition in the times. Unfortunately, his son's trading practices alienated customers and the brewery kind of went into a bit of a decline. At the same time, there were a lot of Burton brewers that lost their export market to Russia, Scandinavia and beyond, mainly as a result of the Napoleonic blockades. As such, they needed a new market to export their beers to. With the Bao Brewery going into a bit of a decline in alienated practices, it made perfect sense for the East India Company to try and get other brewers that they could get their beer from. At the request of the East India Company, and the fact that they liked the Bao Brewery beer so much with the heavily hopped, Allsop's Brewery was commissioned to make a beer in the style of Hodgson's October beer that could therefore be exported to India, so a strongly hopped ale. Other brewers in the area also immediately followed their lead. This India pale ale was really preferred by merchants in India, possibly because of the Burton water profile. As such, the initial hogsheads transferred to India were a massive success, and so regular trade emerged from this. Early IPs, however, were only slightly higher in alcohol percentage than other beers at the time, and so wouldn't have even been considered strong ales. More of the world was, however, well fermented with fewer residual sugars, so they would have been quite dry and very heavily hot. Other than just IPAs, porters were also very successfully transferred over to both India and California, and so they could also survive the long voyages. And so with this, what is a double IPA? Well, effectively, it's just double the strength of an IPA, or more traditionally, it's more 1.66 times the strength of a traditional IPA. But I think it fits with the Dragon's Breath beer. It's harsher, and it's more bitter. So what I'm going to be doing is brewing a clone of Pliny the Elder, Pliny the Elder, not completely sure on how to pronounce it, but I'm going to do a clone of this based off their recipe. I am also, however, going to fine tweak it slightly to be more towards a 14 litre batch, and also I don't particularly want to do a 90 minute boil, as I don't think there really is that much necessity for it. Other than that, everything else is going to be kept exactly the same. We're going to be going for 87.5% or just pale ale malt as a backbone. To this, I'm going to add 5% of sugars, dextrose, another 3.7% of crystal malt, 130 EBC crystal malt, and another 3.7% dextrin malt, assumably for the head retention perhaps. For hops we're going to use a huge variety, we're going to use some Columbus for bittering, we're going to use some Simcoe, as well as some Centennial, so very American hops. These are going in at all stages of the boil, at the beginning, in the middle, towards the aroma, even at hop stand and dry hop with them. The yeast, they do state to use WLP001, unfortunately it was basically all out. So I've gone instead for a different American L yeast, which is the Imperial Yeast A07 flagship yeast, which should hopefully be about the same. And hopefully this is going to come out with a nice 7.9% ABV and a whopping 93 IBUs. So that should provide the strong and harsh taste. And so with this, I'm very excited to get on with the brew day. So I've raised my strike temperature to about 70 degrees, as there's a lot of grain going in, and it will lower that back down to the 67 that we want. 
And so I'm going to go in with four kilograms of Maris Otter Pale Ale Malt, 170 grams of Crystal Malt, and another 170 grams of Dextrin Malt. I'm not going to add the dextrose just yet. I'm going to wait for the mash to be completed, the sparge to be completed, and after that, I'm going to take my sugars and then dissolve it into the wort itself without the grain in there, because we don't really have any necessity for it. I'm going to be letting this mash at 67 degrees for a time of about one hour. After about five, ten minutes, I'm going to turn on the pump just to recirculate the wort and hopefully help it get a little bit clearer and get rid of some of the starch. Once the mash is done, I'm going to lift and sparge. Now with such, again, such a high mash amount and with us going for about 14 litre batch, I will be using less sparge water with about one to two litres worth of it. At the same time, I'm also going to turn on the heating element to start heating up to a boil straight away. Once at boil, in goes our first hop additions, which is going to be 27 grams of Columbus, otherwise known as Tomahawk, and this should provide a nice 60 IBUs. At 45 minutes into the boil, we'll add another 9 grams of Columbus hops. After that, at 30 minutes into the boil, we'll be adding 10 grams of Simcoe. At 15 minutes into the boil, I'm going to add in my immersion chiller just to sanitize it, and also add in about a teaspoon of yeast nutrient. Now I've gotten into quite a habit of adding some yeast nutrient, whether it helps or not, I'm not too sure, but at this point it's just become a habit. Finally at zero minutes into the boil, just before I turn off, I'm going to add 46 grams of Simcoe and 19 grams of Centennial hops. Now I will need to dry hop as well at some point, but the official recipe for Pliny the Older states to dry hop once fermentation is completely finished. Now they do say to transfer into another vessel for secondary, but I think that's quite an outdated thing now, and I'll just be dry hopping once fermentation starts halting down a little bit. Once the boil's down, it's just time to start cooling straight away, down to about 19, 20 degrees Celsius, and then transfer into my fermenter. Once it's all transferred, I'm gonna add in my yeast, which is AO7 Imperial Flagship Yeast. I didn't bother making a starter for this as it contains a large amount of cells and I'm only using a 14 litre batch. So hopefully that'll be absolutely fine. The yeast in, it's just time to close it up, leave it in a nice warm, dark place for however long it needs to ferment. Hopefully about one to two weeks. And so we'll see you when we dry hop. All right, so the double IPA, the Dragon's Breath beer has finished fermenting. And so I guess it's just time to start adding our dry hops. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna crack the top open of my fermenting bus here. And just on top, I'm gonna chuck in 19 grams worth of Centennial hops, 19 grams worth of Columbus hops, and another 19 grams of Simcoe hops. And I'm gonna let these dry hop for about five days before adding in a second dry hop addition. All right, so I have dry hop number two, which is gonna be five grams of Columbus, five grams of Simcoe, and five grams of Centennial. I'm gonna leave these for another three days before kegging. What you be having? I do be looking for something to put hairs on my chest. We've stopped selling goat's beer a while back now, we have. What? Well, what about this dragon's breath beer then? Hairs on your chest? That'll make your chest hair have hairs on your head, be it. All right, and here we have the Dragon's Breath, or otherwise, the Double IPA, or the Pliny the Elder Clone. Again, Pliny, Pliny, I, I really should have looked this up. I'm really happy with this. It looks really pretty, really nice and orange, really lovely bubbles, really good head. Uh, this, I'm very happy with this bit. Transparent as well. So some stats about this. I did get a worse mash efficiency than I wanted. Unfortunately, this came out to about 1.06 original gravity, as opposed to the expected 1.072, so substantially lower. Not too sure why this was, but alas, maybe a different grain crush or something I should have used. I don't know, or just it was a big batch and maybe I haven't dialed in the big batch numbers yet. Whatever the reason was, 11 point loss, not the best, but that's okay. And then we finished at about 1.010, so again about two points lower, giving us a total ABV of about 6.6%. There is obviously some loss in that. It's okay, I think I can deal with this. So just looks wise, really beautiful orange hue, sort of amber orange, very pretty, nice and transparent, really clear with lots of bubbles going up. That's sort of what I think of when I think of double IPA and IPA, I think of this specific colour. I'm also quite pleased with the head. The head seems to be retaining its size and shape and there's you know, some nice lacing developing as it's going down. So I guess something must have worked with the head retention for this specific beer. I feel like the head also isn't completely white white. I feel like there's a slight something to it, like a slight tinge or slight colour. So let's uh, have a little smell. That's a gorgeous smell, very resiny. 
I'm getting lots of pineapple from this as well. Heavy on the pineapple, and I feel like heavy on the grapefruit, is that? Yeah, resin, grapefruit, pineapple is what I'm getting, with like some dry hop something. I look, I want to say banana, right banana? Incredible smell though. Also, just seeing these bubbles come up, they're moving so slowly. All right, the main thing. Oh my word. Yeah, I mean, that's gorgeous. Cool. Again, like, like uh, I want to say, is that resiny? It's a bit grassy. I feel like I'm getting some pineapple in that again. I'm getting some grapefruit. I feel like there's a bit of maybe pear. That's really lovely. Really impressive. Bitter then, afterwards as well. Uh, lingering finish is a very sort of sharp bitterness. As the hops die off, it's just left with like this lingering bitterness, um, which isn't awful, but it is harsh. It is like a harsh bitterness. It's not a bad harsh. It's a good harsh, just like a high IBU harsh, as opposed to sort of hot burn harsh. That's nice. You taste some alcohol, so you do feel that it's got like six point something percent in that, but it's not like a uh, high triple alcohol burn. It's more of just, oh yeah, this has something in it. And initially the um, hops really play well with the malt. Yeah, so there's a nice malt sweetness and the hop interplay going on, which I'm really pleased with. Nice body, nice mouthfeel. So I'm happy with the way that the malt sweetness balances out the harsh bitterness of the IBUs. And I think for a Dragon's Breath beer, this delivers. It's got the harshness. It's got that kind of wonderful flavor to it. I've sort of gone off IPAs recently just because there were so many of them. But I think having had this, I might give it another play. Unfortunately, I don't have a Pliny the Elder to play about with as I would love to have done a side-by-side -side taste comparison. If I can manage to get my hands on one, I'll definitely try to do a very short comparison video comparing one of these that I've got bottled up against the Pliny the Elder and I'll probably make this available to any members that have joined from silver or higher and again a big thank you and a shout out to anybody who has joined. I'll be posting clips of behind the scenes footage once I get some more of this, maybe bloopers and updates of how beers have developed over time, especially with this. Will it stay true to its flavour or start to go off once that sort of dry hop aroma goes away? I guess we'll see. If you like this video please do leave a like and subscribe and let me know in the comments if you've tried a Pliny the Elder and tried to make a clone of it and how that came out or just what is your favorite double IPA to drink. Cheers, thanks for watching. Hair on your chest. <laughs> hair on your chest. That will make your chest hair have hair. <laughs> What? <laughs> I'm struggling. That's gonna make your chest hair have hair. <laughs>